Let's now take a look at White Litany by Chili Gonzalez. In essence, the tune couldn't be more straightforward. It's a rising scale and we're in a minor key or a minor mode. We're in C minor, aren't we? So he takes the notes of the scale and he walks steadily up. That's a phrase, that's a sentence. And he answers it with almost the same thing. With a stray note, we'll come to that in a moment. And at the end of our first phrase, C minor, he ends on chord five, which is very common. It's called an imperfect cadence. It's like a comma in music. We need some more music to carry on. And his answering phrase starts in C minor. And he's taken us to G minor. We feel as if we've arrived somewhere else. We've gone somewhere. And he's done that with that A natural. What's the difference between C minor and G minor? I'm playing natural minors there. Well, the answer is C has three flats, G minor has two flats, therefore the A natural is the difference, which is why that A natural helps transport us, especially with the D underneath, to G minor. And the F sharp, by the way, on the left hand, that's helping that movement to G minor. And then, having played us this tune, a simple rising tune with a little shifting key that we've spoken about. He then does some variations on it. There are four variations and an ending. We might call the ending a tag. And the ending clever, cleverly takes us from G minor, we said we ended up. It moves us back home to C minor. So the first variation, the first theme we need to make sure that our notes are absolutely synced up and together. And I'm using the pedal with each chord just to link them up. I'm not suggesting you play it like this. I'm just making the point that it's the pedal that I'm using to link up the chords. Um, and there's a definite sense of dying away at the end of the phrases. You could make a bit more. I deliberately didn't sort of do a big crescendo on that first line, but you could have done. It's heading somewhere, isn't it? With a sense of possibly dying away at the end of the phrases. I'll leave that kind of detail up to you to work through. And then from bar nine, we have the first variation. He has put it into two parts. We might call this contrapuntal. Contrapuntal music is when we have two melodic lines weaving in and out of each other. It's not quite what we've got here because one of our lines is very much a bass line rather than a melody. Do you agree? Mm. Um, whereas the top line is more melodic, but there are definitely two lines. Let's listen to them again. We're staying quiet and peaceful. that movement up there and it creates some clashes on the way doesn't it if we play it slowly we can enjoy them all the more and speed we don't notice them as much but there's a sense of woo, of shifting sands there and we're taking care to link up those nodes and are dying away at the end of the phrases. In his second variation, it's almost like, if you compare it with the third, you'll see it's the same thing. Well, I'll come to that in a second. Let's go from bar 17. I love the, the rhythmic sort of 
mismatch we've got going on here. I put no dynamics into there. I think it's quite magical, that complete stillness, white litany. It makes us think of churchy things, doesn't it? But equally well, you could have a nice crescendo there. A sense. And then the second phrase, we need to be a bit careful at the end of this one. I'll go slowly. And I quite like having the thumb on that C left hand so that the second finger can get straight to that G for the scale down. And so it links up quite nicely, those two vari the variations. And then this third variation is, as I started to say, the right hand is playing what both hands have just played. And I'm using some pedal there. I like the fact that the pedal helps us create these lovely chords. This one, uh, this seventh chord. to sit like this. Ah. Work out the chords that's going on. And then in the fourth variation, we've got the melody in the left hand. High time, isn't it? Let's go for it. So even though it's quiet, we need quite a lot of tone and well sense of that being the main thing. And that's contrary to what we normally do, isn't it? I'm using just a tiny bit of pedal to help link up the chords, but I'm being careful when we've got scaly bits to not have very much pedal. We don't want too much of a blur. So there's no pedal there. Bit of pedal. Pedal's off now while I walk up that scale. I hasten to add, you could play the whole thing without any pedal and it'll work very well. I might do that at the end. I love that. We need to make sure we're holding on to these chords to enjoy the lovely crunches. Now I'll watch the fingering there, it makes good sense, the fingering in the book. And then here at the end, as we said before, we end up, end up the melody, the theme in G minor. So to end the whole piece, we need to somehow, it'll feel more satisfying if we can get back to C minor. We've ended in G minor, and the way Julie does it is he goes via the relative major, which is E flat major. So first of all, he has a cadence, a five, one cadence in E flat major, which then leads very nicely to a one, C minor. Can we just look at that last cadence again? It's so so common. I said chord one. It is chord one, but it's a G in the bass rather than a C. And we could put a C up here just to fill out the chord. Then it goes to chord five. I'll put the third in. Then it goes to chord one. And very often what musicians might do is they might suspend, they might just delay the pleasure of the last chord. For a moment to give us that feeling. Or oh, just one of the notes possibly. Chord one, chord five. I'll keep the 
F. Before it goes down to the E flat. Again, we're thinking voices. Those three voices go to those three notes. Let's keep the D for too long this time. There's all sorts of options, or even all three notes. I'm going to keep all three notes. It's a very effective way of delaying. And a jazz musician would use the same thing for chord five. The, the, um, the colours of the chords are different, but the idea of it, chord one, chord five, chord one, is identical. Um, it's a really effective piece. Uh, there's lots in it to explore and I hope you enjoy learning it too. Take care. Bye-bye for now.